Hey folks, this is Andrew from the Flutter team and I'm here to talk with you about the new Flutter Gen UI package and how you can use it to create entirely new application experiences using generative UI. That might be a new term for some of y'all. It, uh, it certainly was for me a few months ago when I started working on this, but ultimately it's a pretty straightforward idea. Odds are you've got generative AI based agents working on your behalf in a lot of the apps you use, summarizing emails and docs, turning raw notes into vacation plans, and scanning code for ways to make it better. The functionality for all these journeys is great. The agent can guide me through a process and get me to my goal, but the interfaces tend to be extremely text heavy. I type in what I want, the agent reports back with a wall of text, I type some more, and so on. That works, but it's not how I prefer to interact with my devices. If you're watching this video, you know that Flutter apps feature rich, delightful UI composed of widgets that give me exactly the info I need in a way that's easy to scan and understand, and provide me the opportunity to communicate back through buttons and sliders and everything else. How can I get that kind of polished, streamlined experience while working with AI? Where's the agent that speaks in widgets rather than just text? That is the question that Generative UI is intended to answer. With the Flutter Gen UI package, you're able to give your agents a catalog of widgets that they can populate with data and present on screen so the user can interact with them. If the agent decides that it needs the user to pick one of three choices, for example, nobody needs to manually type in a response, the agent can choose to generate a row of buttons, get a tap, and keep right on going. This accomplishes a couple things. One, it breaks through that wall of text paradigm that you often see with agents. The other is that it opens up some interesting new possibilities for how users experience an app on the way to accomplishing whatever they're trying to do. For example, think of the screens and navigation in the application you're building or one that you use all the time. You've got a hierarchy of routes, some of them probably data heavy with things you might or might not need at that moment, and users need to learn their way around the app in order to get things done. What if, rather than that very predefined structure, you had an experience where the components of the UI just arrived on screen when you needed them? Imagine a health and fitness app. Lots of data around, activity trackers, and sleep, and all the rest of it to navigate through. With GenUI, though, an agent can help get you to where you're going a little easier. Maybe I open that up one afternoon and the agent knows that's normally when I like to do a workout. So the top of the screen is the UI component for beginning one. I tap a button to get started. The agent checks local storage and sees yesterday was leg day. So it offers me a workout plan with upper body exercises. I say looks good. And now the progress tracking UI takes over the screen with different components depending on the exercises and so on. It's that little difference between me needing to map what I'm trying to do to the right taps and scroll gestures required by the UI and the UI mapping itself to what I'm trying to accomplish. Rather than me having to navigate, the app can just offer a clear path to the thing that I'm trying to reach. Ultimately, this leads to experiences that are more dynamic, personalized, and ephemeral rather than being rigidly structured ahead of time. Okay. That's some fancy conceptual talk. Let's get some code on the screen. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the Flutter Gen UI package and its key components, code and integration that includes a custom widget, and show you how you can get started too. One thing I should be clear about though, this package is still in the early phase of its life cycle. It's available on pub.dev and the code is up on GitHub, but depending on when you're watching this video, it's possible that some of the names or API details you see may have changed. Fortunately, I can point you to two great resources maintained by the package authors. First is the usage guide, which is linked here. It's got the right instructions and other info to help get you up and running quickly. The other is the implementation guide, also linked here, which describes how the package works, including some useful internal details. Both of these guides are Markdown formatted, by the way. So if you like to code with the help of an agent like Gemini CLI, they're ready to be used as rules or context. All right. Let's get into my editor. All right, so this is my app and I've done a little bit of work to start here. This is, you know, the Flutter app is created. It's a scaffold, I've got a little text field and a send button at the bottom. I've also done the work of integrating Firebase into the project. So that side of things is already done. So let's start getting GenUI 
into my application. The first thing to do is go into the pub spec and add the right packages. So first step is Flutter Gen UI. This is the core package itself that has the core libraries to provide this kind of functionality. Then we've got Flutter Gen UI Firebase AI. This is an adapter package that allows Flutter Gen UI to connect to Firebase AI logic. And on top of those, I've got JSON Schema Builder. This is just kind of a utility that'll help me define some data schemas later on. By the way, you might notice some uh, interesting Git references in here to commits and stuff like that. This is just because I'm working with an early version of the package. When you go to use this, just get it from pub.dev like any package you'd normally use. So don't worry about this bit here. All right, let's get back into main.dart and start the integration. So first up, I'm gonna go ahead and import the package, Flutter Gen UI. All right, so down here I have a stateful widget, and this is where I'm gonna make my connection for generative UI. So first up, I'm gonna create a Gen UI conversation. This is the object that represents my overall interaction with the agent, kind of runs the show. And here in init state, let's get that going. First up is a catalog of widgets. For right now, I'm just gonna use the default catalog that comes with the package. So that's got widgets for markdown, text, images, things like that. Next up, I'll create a generator. So this is gonna be the agent's end of the conversation, so to speak. This is where I give it the catalog of widgets and I'm gonna give it a system instruction that tells it what I want the agent to accomplish. Rather than making y'all you know, watch me type out this entire instruction, I'm just gonna paste it in here. So this is my system instruction. Here I'm telling it, hey, you're gonna create workout plans. This is a rough description of what I'm looking for. And you'll note, I also tell it specifically to generate new UI in response to my messages. The Flutter Gen UI package provides a bunch of new tools to the agent uh, to generate new UI. And so I'm telling my agent to take advantage of those tools. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and create my conversation object. And it needs some properties. So first I'm gonna give it a Gen UI manager. This is the object that sort of manages the state in between the agent and widgets. It makes sure the widgets get rebuilt when the agent wants them rebuilt and so on. I'm also gonna pass in that content generator you just saw me create. I'm gonna give two little callbacks here, on surface added and on surface deleted. And it's gonna yell at me because I haven't made these functions yet. But these methods are gonna be called whenever the agent decides to create a new UI surface or get rid of a surface that it already created. So I'm gonna create a little list up here just to keep track of those surface IDs. Each surface is represented by a string called a surface ID. And then on surface added, can use good old set state to take that surface ID and add it to my list. And then I'm gonna have an on surface deleted that does the opposite. All right, so down here I've got, this is the UI for my application. What I need now is to display the UI generated by the agent. So I'm gonna go up here to where I have an expanded, I'm gonna get rid of this size box that's just a placeholder in here, and I'm gonna put in a list view. So for the item count, I'll give it the number of surface IDs, and for the item builder, I'm gonna build a new kind of widget called a Gen UI surface. A Gen UI surface is the widget that represents a single chunk of UI created by the agent. So when the agent decides it wants to make one of those catalog items that I gave it before, it's gonna create a surface and I can use the Gen UI surface widget to display that UI. So it needs to know which conversation is hosting this particular UI, that's the first parameter, and then it needs the surface ID for the surface that it is meant to present. All right, so my app is now ready to display generated UI and I just need to kick off the process with a message. So I'll add a method in here called send message that takes the contents of that text field and sends them off to the agent. And I'll use the send request method that's part of Flutter Gen UI to make that happen. All right, I can tell Gemini, hey, leg day workout, please. And there it is. The agent not only decided which content it was gonna create, but also which widgets to use from that catalog in order to display it to me. Cool, so I'm connected to Gemini through Firebase AI logic. I've given my agent a goal, which is to create a workout plan, and it's able to generate not only the content I'd like, but also the UI that's presenting it to me. It's just using the built-in catalog of widgets from the Gen UI SDK though, and I'd like to provide more direction than that, both to give it some guardrails and to add my own design. 
The next step is to create a custom catalog item and give that to the agent. Let's go. Okay, so we're back. Still got my app running. Let's give this a custom catalog item. First thing I need to do is import the JSON schema builder package. I'm going to use this to define a data schema for my custom catalog item. Now let's scroll down and get to work on that. So this is sort of a data contract for what the widget expects and what the agent should produce in terms of the data to fill this uh, catalog item. So I'm going to define an object here and I'll give it some properties. One is the title of the workout and that'll be a string. And I'm going to provide a natural language description of the string. Next, I've got the individual exercises. So that'll be a list. And my list gets a description too. And my list is made up of items, of course, and each of those will be a string. So just like the list itself, the items individually get a description. And so I'll tell the agent exactly what kind of data I expect in each of these. And last, I can tell it how many exercises I expect in the list. So I can set a min length of three and a maximum of five. Last up, I'm going to mark both of these fields as required. Cool. So there's my schema. Now let's put this to work by creating the catalog item. I'll call mine workout card. It's going to need a few properties of its own. First is a name. Then I'm going to give it that schema. And last is a widget builder. This is the function that'll be called whenever it needs to be built. This is going to look like a lot of parameters, but at the end of the day, this is just a widget builder method. All right, we're, this is a simple example, so we're only going to use a couple of these. Our first job is to get the data that the agent gave us to build the widget. So that comes in the form of JSON. So I'm going to retrieve the title, just as you would with any JSON you're deserializing. And then I'll grab the exercises as well. They come as a list of dynamic. I'm just going to do a little map here to turn them into a list of strings. All right, so I'm going to use that data and I'm going to make myself a stateless widget that takes those as properties, just like any other stateless widget, and builds some children. We'll call it workout card. Now I'm going to give it those two properties. I got the title, I have a list of string for my exercises. Then we'll get those into the constructor. Cool. Now I just need to get the children in place and the build method. And to keep this video short, I'm just going to pop these in here. There is nothing fancy going on here. Just typical containers, text widgets, columns, everything else. Cool. I now have a catalog item. Let's add it to the catalog here back in init state. So I can use copy with to add it to the built-in catalog. And then I'll update my system instruction to say, don't just generate new UI. Generate a workout card. Give it a little hot restart. We just did a leg day, so maybe back and shoulders. And there's our new catalog item created by the agent for us. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, like, hey, that looks like UI that should have been left back in the 90s. Two things about that. Number one, it's still the 90s. All right, 2025 is just 1990 I've checked the math. Number two, you're right, that looks a little old. So, I'm not a designer. Fortunately, I have an agent partner that is. So let me fire up Gemini CLI, and I'm going to ask it to modernize my workout card a little bit. Let's see what it comes up with. And it's going to go find my widget. It's reading in the file, and it's got a plan. All right, there's my edit. I'll let it save that. And we can hop back in the project, do a little hot reload. So there you go, a nicer new look. And again, this is just a widget at the end of the day. It's being generated by the agent, but hot reload still works. Same code for the widgets that you're normally used to. All right, so this has been just an example of the simple catalog item that we got the agent to generate for us. But imagine though, the more interesting and new interfaces that you can make this way. We could have multiple widgets that are being created by the agent. We could have some that are long lived and stay in particular locations on the screen and so on. This is some of the stuff that the team and you can explore over the next few months as this package matures. Okay, 
So that's a quick look into Generative UI, the Flutter Gen UI package, and how you can get started giving agents the ability to build the right UI at the right time. To keep learning, check the links here for the Flutter Gen UI package and to the two guides I mentioned earlier, and we'll see you next time.